introduction of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears being volume two depicting their further travels and adventures this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears by seymour eaton introduction more about these bears when in the autumn of nineteen hundred five i created the characters of teddy b and teddy g i builded better than i knew i brought these bears out of their mountain den in colorado and started them on their tour of the east to teach children that animals even bears may have some measure of human feeling that the primary purpose of animals is not necessarily that of supplying sport for the hunter that this lesson has been abundantly taught is proven by the overwhelming welcome given the teddy bears by the boys and girls of the united states and it is safe to say that the traditional bear will get you has now and for ever lost its frightening significance this book is a sequel to the travels and adventures of the roosevelt bears and completes the story of the tour of teddy b and teddy g from colorado to washington the third volume will report in jingle and picture the tour of the teddy bears abroad seymour eaton athdara lansdowne pennsylvania end of introduction Chapter One of More About Teddy B and Teddy G, the Roosevelt Bears. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Betty B. More About Teddy B and Teddy G, the Roosevelt Bears by Seymour Eaton. Chapter One How the Roosevelt Bears Reached New York the roosevelt bears were born out west in a big ravine near a mountain crest where they lived as cubs and had such play as teddy bears have every day but they learned some things as years went by of cities great and buildings high and trains that run at rapid speed and schools which teach folks how to read and circus clowns and phonograph and other things which make folks laugh and big hotels where meals they say are served in style both night and day they had heard of men of great renown who lived and died in boston town of rulers brave and statesmen bold and millionaires with barrels of gold of men who work just day by day for boys and girls in daily pay and of one they heard who works for fun the president at washington these bears some travel books had found which told them the world is round they made up their minds that they would see and learn about geography and visit cities everywhere and introduce the teddy bear they found some gold in a cave one day which they could use to pay their way so one bright morn they said good-bye to cave and creek and mountain high to an old bobcat with a bandaged knee to a young cougar and squirrels three to a bighorn sheep and a mountain deer and to other friends that lived quite near and with bags on backs and sticks in hand they started their tramp across the land the black bear's name was teddy b the b for black or brown you see and teddy g was the gray bear's name the g for gray but both bears came for teddy because everywhere's children called them teddy bears the teddy part is a name they found on hat and tree and leggings round on belt and boot and plates of tin and scraps of paper and biscuits thin and other things a hunter dropped at a mountain camp where he had stopped the story tells how these teddy bears scattered for ever all blues and cares and made fun and frolic and mischief too and did some tricks for bears quite new and how some boys the stories tell liked these two teddy bears so well that they made a million for the stores to sell some quite little for children small and some as big as the bears are tall the brown ones looking like teddy b and the white as funny as teddy g 
the story goes on to tell how far these two bears rode in a pullman car and the tricks they played on folks that night when the colored porter put out the light and how teddy g wouldn't sleep upstairs on a shelf he said too small for bears he wanted a window he wanted to see and he kept folks awake till half past three and the story tells of other tricks in the dining car and of a mix when teddy g pulled a rope on top and brought the train to a sudden stop and how the two were put off the train on a kansas farm in a shower of rain the fun they had from that time on fills every page of book number one they started by learning the famous trick how farmer boys get ahead so quick but the things they did would take your breath for they scared the farmer half to death the horses were put at gathering eggs and pigs walked round on two hind legs and sheep were given the corn to hoe and potatoes to plant and wheat to sow the story tells how an angry bull made a pasture field look pretty full and chased the two bears round a stack and over the top and down and back from there to a district school they went on mischief and education bent where things were done by teddy b who hit the desk and said that he would make letters dance and figures fly and good boys laugh and bad boys cry the questions he gave and the boys their look they had never seen them in a book if a camel can go without water a week how long can he go if he owns a creek and this to bound the moon and sky and name the capital of by and by and a hundred more as hard and tough till the children said they'd had enough but when they left the school that day the children were happy the farmers say the story tells how in railway style they ran an engine for a mile and spent a day at a county show and helped the boys to make things go how they walked on ropes drawn good and tight and jumped through hoops and landed right and of the ride in an old balloon which took them halfway to the moon and things that happened in the sky that night and the way the world went out of sight and how they landed in lincoln park in chicago town just for dark and the big hotel on a busy street where waiters brought them things to eat how they rang for bellboys just for fun to give them a quarter and see them run and the fun they made in vaudeville children are laughing about it still and the bargain sale teddy g got lost and the things they bought and what they cost and their trip to niagara falls that night and what they thought of niagara's height and the picnic boys and the boating stunt when they shot the rapids in a punt and how the boys made cheering go when the train pulled out for buffalo the story tells of their further jaunt and of teddy g at a restaurant how he missed his train and lost his mate for teddy b had risen late and the jolly crowds the bears to greet to cheer them all along the street as they rode from station to common green in boston town like king or queen and of the home on beacon hill where priscilla alden and her brother will entertained them gladly days and nights while they were seeing the boston sights but the things they did in boston town are done in picture and written down in volume one by teddy's paw the jolliest book you ever saw it tells how they captured bunker hill and worked like soldiers with stubborn will and how they got lost in boston squares where criss-cross streets run everywheres and the time they had at plymouth rock when trying to make four fathers talk and the auto ride to lexington which nearly cost them all their fun for teddy g would chauffeur b and he ran that car like sixty-three it didn't run he made it sail and landed himself and his mate in jail the story tells of their harvard tricks where they got themselves in another mix in getting degrees a double l d which didn't fit well on teddy g it tells about the talking machine the funniest thing they had ever seen how they danced a two-step and sang as well and heard uncle josh his stories tell it tells of the time when they went to see where the boston patriots made good tea in seventeen hundred and sixty-three and then of their sail in a little skiff 
and how a storm hit them a biff and sent them out on the ocean wide halfway across to the other side and how at noon there came in sight a tower of ice all glistening white and how they met away out there on this iceberg white a polar bear and the stories he told of a northern pole which was never seen by a living soul but it carried a flag both night and day the stars and stripes of the u s a and the story tells of the rescue made and how the steamer crowds hurrahed as yankee doodle the brass band played and then it tells this jolly book how reporters met them at sandy hook and asked them questions and pictures took and of new york and its buildings high and how the bears made money fly and dressed in style to see the town to do fifth avenue up and down and the guide they hired wee muddy pete a lad whose home was on the street and his little dog a terrier white pete's boon companion day and night the story tells of the circus show where the two bears helped to make things go how like heroes of a hundred fights the roosevelt bears in colored tights stepped in the ring to dance or sing to ride or tumble or anything so these teddy bears are here to stay they came from the west one summer's day and journeyed east from town to town and gathered fame and much renown book number one boys know it well the pictures show and the stories tell of how they crossed the u s a and made folks laugh both night and day to new york city there to be told that teddy bears in the shops were sold but the bears in the shops are only toys made to please good girls and boys these roosevelt bears teddy's b and g are as full of mischief as you or me they laugh and talk and sleep and eat and go around on two hind feet and ride on cars and wear good clothes and the things they do dear only knows for they read from books and music play and lose themselves nearly every day but the story here and these pictures new tell things about them just as true as the things that happen children say from west to east along the way End of chapter one chapter two of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears put out a fire one day the bears took trolley rides with muddy pete and cribs for guides the car was open they enjoyed the air they helped the conductor collect the fare and pulled the bell to start or stop and fixed the trolley pole on top and put on the brakes and rang the gong when teams in front didn't move along but they got in trouble when teddy g climbed on the roof of the car to see the working of the electricity what it was that hit him he didn't know but it hit so smart teddy g let go and tumbled off a dozen feet from the trolley top down to the street the car was stopped teddy b got out to see what the trouble was all about the conductor gave expert advice muddy pete replied with words not nice while crib stood round as if to say let us try it again some other day the thing that struck me said teddy g as he walked to the curb on hand and knee struck me all over outside and in at every place like a prodding pin and burned like fire and did all so quick i hadn't time to learn the trick let the car go on said teddy b we'll stay right here this town to see and get some lunch and look around and walk up that hill to that college ground and climb that pole on the public square and show the children playing there that the roosevelt bears have been to school and know a b c by rote and rule you may go yourself said teddy g and see the town but as for me i climbed one pole to-day before and it left my bones a trifle sore i'll stay right here and rest a bit the several places where i got hit while thus they talked muddy pete and cribs went off to buy some roasted ribs and fried potatoes and muffins hot and three cups of coffee in a pot as they ate their lunch they heard a ring both quick and loud ding 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 a fire fire cried muddy pete 
and off the four ran down the street teddy g forgot about electricity and ran as fast as teddy b they found the fire in a dry goods store and making its way towards three or four of the largest shops on the busiest street a clothing house and a store with meat and a great big grocery on the right and not a fireman yet in sight the fireman's hall was across the street and in half a minute captain muddy pete had told some boys that the job was theirs and had given orders to the roosevelt bears about the wagons and reel and hose and hooks and ladders and firemen's clothes i've seen a thousand fires said he and i know this thing from a to z slap on those togs they fit you slick boost out the reel get busy quick hitch up that rubber to that spouter there twist round the stopper and let her tear hang on to that nozzle you teddy g and point it straight at the fire you see now let her go and with swishing stroke the water struck the fire and smoke in sixty seconds the roosevelt team were pouring water a steady stream on the blazing store in the crowd near by making women run and children cry captain muddy pete took full command and told the bears just where to stand and what to do and where to go and to point the nozzle high or low they climbed up ladders in clouds of smoke and lifted hose and windows broke and carried goods out to the street and burned their ears and scorched their feet they saved two boys from the highest floor who were in a room and had locked the door the wind was blowing both hard and high and it carried fire to roofs nearby teddy g was ordered by muddy pete to carry a ladder across the street and go up to a roof with hose in hand and on the ridge to take his stand and turn the hose all round about till every fire he could see was out and thus they worked like trained firemen till there wasn't a spark where the fires had been the man that owned the dry goods store took the bears to his home for an hour or more and cribs and peat for cream and cake and offered them cash which they wouldn't take he ordered a carriage with coachman swell to take them back to their hotel and promised to print in the local press their pictures large in firemen's dress and a full report of the fire that day and the things he heard the townsfolk say about bravery shown and the speed they made captain muddy pete and his fire brigade said teddy b in their room that night one fire a day is enough to fight i'm stiff and tired and burned and sore i'm going to sleep a week or more and read in bed and play i'm sick till i get tired of doing that trick said teddy g as he put out the light you fought one fire i had two to fight but i'd rather play with a house of fire than fool again with an electric wire but long before they went to sleep they outlined plans next day to keep the hippodrome and the wax musee were things they surely had to see end of chapter two this recording is in the public domain chapter three of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears recorded for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears see the wax musee at eight o'clock the following day the postman left the bell boys say a hundred letters for each roosevelt bear from east and west and everywhere letters from friends at their mountain glen telling of trouble with hunting men a letter from the teacher of the kansas school with sums worked out and giving a rule for answering the questions which teddy b had given the class in geography a letter from the farmer where they spent a day asking them sure to return that way it said that the bull which scared them blue would be tied by the nose when they came through a lawyer wrote demanding cash for the old balloon that went to smash a niagara lad sent local news and an envelope filled with niagara views a sophomore wrote to teddy g to ask how he liked his l d degree priscilla alden sent a little note which said she was glad their little boat carried them through the storm so nice and landed them safe on the berg of ice letters in dozens from girls and boys sending them books and candy and toys to give away when they wanted to treat 
deserving lads like muddy pete the last letter opened by teddy b was an invitation to the wax musee to visit the show that day at three i'll hire a machine said teddy g and answer my mail by electricity there's one at work on the floor below where you feed in letters and let it go i've seen the writing of this machine like a printed page in blue and green and the girl who owns it said that she would give a typewriting lesson free said teddy b i'm afraid you're wrong but if you want to try i'll go along so down they went to try their luck at printing letters like a book the girl was out the machine was there teddy g sat down on the little chair and started in with all his might to pound the keys and make them right while teddy b at every call fed in a letter envelope and all this machine writes greek said teddy b as he picked up the letters the type to see at least the language is new to me chicago is spelled without a c and boston has neither s nor t and priscilla alden would make you sick she's like a problem in arithmetic and that kansas teacher is doing some tricks with question marks and the figure six and that farmer man no one will blame if he shoots us both when he sees his name you wrote this lawyer about the old balloon in dollar signs enough to buy the moon but teddy g went straight ahead while the machine by teddy b was fed until every letter that both bears had was answered some way good or bad twas three o'clock when they left to see the mysteries of the wax musee they found buster brown in the entrance hall and a cat climbing up the building wall with tige below looking up at puss and buster's mother trying to stop the fuss good afternoon said teddy b is this buster brown and tige i see tige gave buster a knowing wink which put him wise and made him think the roosevelt bears i've heard of you teddy b and g how do you do you're the jolliest bears i ever saw and buster shook each by the paw while tige seemed glad that he was near and put on a smile from ear to ear you come with us said buster brown we know this place upstairs and down there are people here in smiles and tears who haven't changed for a hundred years we'll make those laugh who look so sad and the merry ones will make them mad but buster's mother made him stay right where he was in wax and clay and tige looked round for a place to hide as the roosevelt bears passed on inside they saw the eagle which stole the child and carried it up in the mountains wild they stopped for a moment to see the king and to ask madame patty if she would sing they saw emperor william in a soldier suit but to all their questions he was deaf and mute so teddy g to make him look gay turned the tails of his mustache the other way at the roman forum teddy b spoke out and asked mark antony what was all about this roman crowd and caesar slain and why they were doing the thing again and thus they went from place to place looking at people of every race and crimes committed and prisoners hung and no complaint from any tongue at the lion's den teddy g was wild a lion had killed a little child i'll go right in and smash his face but a man who was there to guard the place spoke up and said that lion in there is not afraid of a roosevelt bear he's made of wax and that savage look he wears all the time like a picture book but teddy g replied that he if he owned the place would let folks see that lions who did such things as they shouldn't live at all in wax or clay then on they went upstairs to guess how ahab played his game of chess said teddy g see if you can play checkers with this wooden man and while you play i'll take off the lid and find out where the man is hid three games were played and teddy b won every one so fast that he made the wooden eyes flow free with tears the first time in a hundred years teddy g looked at him from head to heels and his side door opened to see the wheels and the man's mainspring and his wooden heart he examined with care and took apart 
but he couldn't find out high or low how this man of wood made the checkers go teddy b was polite and said good-bye and the man got up and wiped his eye and held out his hand as well as he could it had several pieces all made of wood and said your playing was pretty good as the bears passed out of the wax musee a paper was handed to teddy g which read like this in printing bold resolved that mothers should never scold for boys are wax and scoldings stick and impressions can't be rubbed out quick resolved that the world was made for play and that boys and bears should have their way when fun is needed the blues to down signed by tige and buster brown the four took hands to skip and sing and dance around in a jolly ring folks crowded near inside and out to see what the fun was all about a thousand shoppers on the street paused as they passed the bears to meet a speech was asked from teddy b as he stepped to the door the crowd to see the u s boys and girls are ours they're made of sunshine love and flowers we're bound with them to scatter blues and we're here to-day to spread the news when teddy b these things had said he buster's resolution read while tige and buster inside the door became wax again as they were before end of chapter three this recording is in the public domain chapter four of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears visit west point the day was fine and the bears were free to take a river boat to see the palisades in tarrytown and to view the hudson up and down a request had come from a young cadet of west point school whom the bears had met to dine at the west point army mess and to see the boys in their army dress and to sleep on an army barracks cot and to try their luck at a target shot and to ride barebacked in the hurdle chute or to join a band with drum and flute or to hear good stories of army fights after taps are sounded to put out the lights so they sent a wire to the cadet to say that they would call that very day they made the trip with but one mishap the wind blew off a newsboy's cap as he walked around on the steamer deck calling out the news of a railway wreck and selling his papers and chewing gum to the crowd of tourists going some teddy g made a jump as he saw it go and he and the cap went down below like a diver he struck the water right and quick as a wink was out of sight man's overboard was called aloud and a cheer went up from the tourist crowd as they saw in the water in a little while the face of a bear with a pleasant smile the boat was stopped and a rope thrown out and in answer to the captain's shout teddy g called back the water's fine i've got the bait pull in your line it didn't take them long to get teddy g on board all dripping wet the children laughed he looked so queer with the newsboy's cap hung on his ear he bowed to tourists left and right and said something about his appetite he asked the steward to bring on some meals as the steamer band played silver heels at west point landing the bears were met by a double carriage with the young cadet and a cavalry mount to escort them round to see the buildings on the ground they drove about for an hour or less then went to their barrack rooms to dress in soldier suits for the evening mess teddy b said he'd be colonel's aide and inspect the boys on dress parade while teddy g said he'd march or stand as leader of the soldier band the parade dismissed and the supper through the bears had nothing else to do but to roll themselves in barrack wraps and to put out the lights at the sound of taps at reveille at six next day they were wide awake and bright and gay and dressed and ready for hours of fun with cavalry horse or battery gun the boys had fun when teddy b rode a cavalry horse down a chute to see how to jump the walls and the hurdles take without a tumble or balk or break the horse was tricky but the bear was game 
and he made him clear each thing that came whether wall or water or brush or bar teddy b would have tried a railway car or a barn or a tree or a load of hay or any old thing that came in his way the finest riding the officers say that was done at west point for many a day teddy g took his turn at soldier fun when he loaded and fired a battery gun he charged in powder and cannon-ball so simple he said it's nothing at all he asked a cadet his hat to keep till he stepped to the muzzle to take a peep to see if the ball was in all right and if things in front were out of sight what happened next no one can tell teddy g was lifted in air a spell and whirled around so quick in space he didn't remember just what took place i caught that ball all right said he when the officer questioned teddy g but i don't like catching balls like that my place i think is at the back next time you pitch don't throw so quick you struck me like a load of brick said the officer for bravery shown we'll give you a title all your own you can drop your harvard l and d and be known as colonel teddy g the boys got out the fife and drum and made things all around them hum as they marched ahead of the roosevelt bears in army stepped down the flight of stairs to take the ferry at half past four across the river to the other shore where a train was waiting to take them down the eastern bank and back to town let us go to-morrow said teddy g and a first-class game of baseball see that ball they pitched at west point school had hardly time enough to cool it struck my paws so fiery hot i thought for a minute that i was shot end of chapter four this recording is in the public domain chapter five of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears play baseball the bears were invited by muddy pete to go with him to an east side street to visit children who never see either grass or field or flower or tree they loaded up like old saint nick with bundles piled on high and thick bouquets of flowers for children sick and toys and candy for those at play and a hundred other things folks say who saw them on the street that day they went around from door to door where bears had never been before climbed flights of stairs and bumped their heads to cheer up lads who were sick in beds threw bouquets into windows high and picked nice toys and let them fly and candy boxes and twigs of green wherever boys and girls were seen but the jolliest sport of the day began when they met an organ grinder man with a monkey train to act the clown and pick up pennies boys throw down teddy g asked the man if he could go with his monkey band for an hour or so teddy b said he the troop would join and see that rich folks shelled out coin he'd give the monkey double pay five cents an hour for half a day and the organ man may go said they and join some other kind of play or if you're tired the two bears said go home for the day and go to bed we'll use your organ and monkey clown and pay you half a dollar down and two dollars more when we are through and return your band as good as new with help from cribs and muddy pete we'll find our way from street to street this bargain made the bears set out to give the children round about and old folks too along the street the funniest kind of music treat teddy g took the crank and just for fun made marches dance and two steps run and polkas gallop and waltzes race and street songs step at a lively pace while teddy b climbed up on top of the music box stood on its prop and threw the monkey and made him yell and caught him every time he fell a boy got a drum for muddy pete and cribs danced round on two hind feet and all five laughed and cheered and sang and made things go with slap and bang the crowd of children filled the square five hundred boys and girls were there and scores of men stopped work to see the tricks of teddy's b and g nickels enough and quarters too and silver dollars not a few 
were collected that day by the players four to give a fresh air week down by the shore to boys and girls a score or more who had never seen the sea before the afternoon was good and hot and the bears sat down in a vacant lot to count their cash and rest their feet and eat some lunch with muddy peat they returned to the organ grinder man his music box and collection can and his monkey clown and some monkey too just as he bargained they should do they gave the monkey an extra dime for working two hours overtime and a box of nuts as a special treat the kind that monkeys like to eat seven boys came over to where they sat with bags of sand and ball and bat and baseball gloves and masks of wire and asked if they the bears could hire we're going to play a lad spoke up the bowery nine for a silver cup and were short two men good players they but they couldn't come to the game to-day and the bowery nine another said are bigger boys by half a head and good at bat and quick to run they beat us last time two to one they don't play fair said another lad they count all balls both good and bad they claimed a foul when i made a base and when i objected they slapped my face the bowery nine said teddy b is the kind of nine i'd like to see we'll join the team and run the game and win that silver cup just the same give me some pointers said teddy g this game you play is new to me the bears were coached in every rule and they both caught on like boys at school the bowery boys in a little while came on the lot in baseball style they read off rules to the other nine and helped lay out the diamond line in size they said among themselves these roosevelt bears are number twelves but the bowery captain bet his hat that neither bear could pitch or bat this game he said is as good as one we'll beat those fellows ten to one a bowery boy went to the bat while the other eight on some lumber sat to watch the play and wait their turn and see the bears their fingers burn teddy b as catcher in mask and pad met every ball both good and bad with snap and skill so sure and quick he seemed to know the baseball trick while teddy g at the pitcher's box put balls to bat like hammer knocks and with curves so neat and twists so new the fielders hadn't a thing to do for not a boy could make a hit and one by one the plate they quit said muddy pete their cake is dough as he marked the score a great big o oh. it's our turn now said teddy b we'll let those bowery fellows see that the team that wins this game to-day will make their score by honest play and of all the batting that was ever done in games that lost or in games that won in timing hits and in making base and in running home in the wildest race this play that day of the roosevelt bears beat baseball records everywhere they knocked that ball so hard and high above the clouds up in the sky that while it tarried out of sight the bears went round with all their might and scored so fast for that silver cup that muddy pete could scarce keep up nine innings each they didn't get for the roosevelt bears would be batting yet if the bowery boys hadn't stopped the score at not for them to sixty four end of chapter five this recording is in the public domain chapter six of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears arrive in philadelphia the bears went out to a country place to see a machine take its trial race invented by a new jersey man and made to fly on a novel plan this trial trip was to prove that day that machines that fly have come to stay when the hour arrived to cut the cord there wasn't a man who would go aboard the bears said they would make the trip and every racing record whip if they only knew how to steer the ship we've sailed before said teddy b we hit chicago down a tree from an old balloon that brought us there from a missouri town at a country fair i'm not afraid said teddy g i'd like to go to the moon to see if the man up there charges entrance fees 
and what he does with all the cheese but as they talked the machine got wise and with buzz and whiz it began to rise and broke the ropes that held it tight and went towards the clouds and out of sight with teddy b and teddy g crabbing at anything they could see the one on a bar beneath the sail and the other on a rope to make a tail they started so quick and went so high they hadn't a chance to say good-bye they had ridden before and lively too on cowboy horses and in frail canoe in an old balloon and a mobile car but this ride that day beat those by far they went over town and farm and creek in one straight line like a lightning streak and it wasn't forty minutes when they came in sight of william penn looking so wise and straight and tall on the top of philadelphia's city hall teddy b called out from where he sat there's a man ahead i see his hat his hand is out he means to try to catch the rope as we go by and teddy g in cowboy style let out the rope nearly half a mile and as it coiled he pulled with might and william penn he lassoed tight a crowd of children down below looked up and saw the bears let go and come from the clouds like sailors bold with not a thing but the rope to hold and land all right on the old man's hat where both sat down to have a chat and look about and view the town and ask each other how they'd get down they looked over the brim to see penn's face and ask him questions about the place what would happen if they should fall and how long it took to build the hall and what it cost and if he thought it nice to pay so much for expert advice and one thing sure they'd like to know why this quaker town was considered slow a crowd soon gathered round the square police and engineers were there and business men and children too and each one wondering what to do for how to get the two bears down was soon being asked by half the town the mayor came out with a megaphone and called aloud up the tower of stone and promised father penn a dime if he'd give the bears a high old time not very far from where they sat a door was opened in the quaker hat and a man put out his head to say that the roosevelt bears could come that way but the door was small and it wouldn't do for neither bear could be crowded through said teddy b go to the street and bring a rope six hundred feet and william here will hold one end while we to the square below descend this plan was tried and in half an hour the bears had landed from the tower and had shaken hands right then and there with every child around the square from there they went the papers say to a broad street bank to draw their pay or to cash a check which teddy g had got in new york as their circus fee when they asked for money the man inside said you'll have to be identified perhaps your names are what you say but prove it you must some other way is that check good said teddy b well if it is i'll let you see that g is he and b is me but before he had time to act the bear the check was taken and the cash was there to a shop they went on chestnut street and dressed up new from head to feet and got the bill and paid the fee and started out the town to see two little lads named jack and will had bought four tickets for vaudeville four seats up front at a children's show that was given to help poor boys to go to a training school where men are paid to teach young lads a useful trade the boys had heard of the roosevelt bears and they spent their money for the extra chairs that very day on chestnut street to give the bears this special treat the boys had followed the bears a square intending to ask if they would care to use up their time that day to go with two little lads to the children's show jack was bravest and walked close behind to see if the bears were really kind you speak to teddy b said he and i'll put the question to teddy g all right said will and he stepped ahead and this to teddy b he said mr teddy b will you come with me right now a children's show to see i have your ticket it's paid for too i bought it specially for you that was good of you of course i'll go said teddy b 
to the children's show we're here to make the jolliest kind of fun for every child we find me too said jack twas all he said his courage wasn't in his head but teddy g to answer jack lifted him high up on his back and danced a jig right then and there to show the crowd that a roosevelt bear for serious people didn't care they lived for fun and their fun they'd share free of expense and everywhere but the things that happened to jack and will that afternoon at vaudeville were not on the program of the children's show for the roosevelt bears folks say who know made the biggest hit of their lives that day and put up an afternoon of play the like of which was never seen by old or young by king or queen End of chapter six this recording is in the public domain chapter seven of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears recorded for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears entertain philadelphia children the theatre chairs were filled with fun for a boy or girl was in every one except the four which jack and will and the roosevelt bears had come to fill the band was playing the latest air and laughing children everywhere as the bears walked down the central aisle in their summer suits cut philadelphia style they looked so jolly and smiled so sweet that the children clapped and stamped their feet and waved their hands and stood on chairs and cried hurrah for the roosevelt bears but the bears were large and the seats were small and they found they couldn't sit down at all so they stood in the aisle to view the crowd and thus spoke teddy b out loud young ladies and gentlemen children dear and chairman too if there is one here teddy g and i have come to stay to hear you laugh and to see the play and since we can't very well sit down we'll go on the stage and help the clown and stand and sit on wall or floor and do some tricks we have done before and some quite old and some quite new and keep it up till the show is through the children called for teddy g but he shook his head and said that he could sing a song or dance a jig or sit on chairs either small or big or talk to girls or with them dine but to make a speech wasn't quite his line the speeches through a theatre page took the two bears back upon the stage as the curtain rolled up to the top a man at the back asked the bears to stop two clowns are on the stage said he they have started their piece and i'll let you see that you can't interrupt or make a noise or you'll spoil this show for these girls and boys your advice is right said teddy b and out they went the clowns to see the clowns were scared when they saw the bears step up behind them unawares and they ran for doors at left and right and as quick as a wink were out of sight but they were ordered back to earn their fee and to take a turn with teddy b's and g and from that hour the play went smart for the two bears helped in every part they made those two clowns march and sing jump over chairs and through a ring and climb up poles and ride a wheel and do a clog dance toe and heel and when they finished amid loud applause the bears ran off on all four paws with the clowns on backs with jolly noise throwing kisses back to girls and boys the orchestra played a boy called taps and then appeared a troop of japs a dozen little men in tights the heroes of a hundred fights for a little while the bears stood by and watched the japs their muscles try and saw them balance balls and bricks on parasols and billiard sticks and climb up ladders out of sight and fall again and land all right then teddy b said he'd like to do a western schoolboy trick he knew he made the japs stand in a row and take hold of hands and not let go then he caught one end and with whirling clip he showed them how to crack the whip the japs went whizzing in the air and whirled in circles everywhere but they did the trick so smart and neat that every jap lit on his feet a man with hoops was next to play and he asked if teddy g would stay and help him show the boys and girls how wooden hoops were taught their twirls but this trick with hoops put teddy g 
in so many circles he couldn't see they came flying at him through the air and rolling in from everywhere and try his best he couldn't throw a single hoop and make it go he was hooped around from head to paw the funniest sight you ever saw but he enjoyed the fun and said that he wore rings enough that day for three but the jolliest thing that day was when the two bears dressed as irishmen a dublin mike and a pat from cork came on the stage to look for work teddy g is mike with workman's hod and teddy b is pat from blarney sod with blackthorn sticks their foes to hit and fill to the brim with irish wit their irish brogue and joke and song made the children laugh both loud and long the last part of the show that day was sleight of hand the program say but why it failed to work out well the man who tried it couldn't tell a trunk was brought a solid mass with iron locks and bound in brass the bears were asked to get inside the trunk was locked and with rope tied and the man announced that at his command he'd slide a curtain and there would stand the roosevelt bears outside and free with the trunk unlocked by any key but it didn't work the bears weren't there and it gave the man a little scare to find he couldn't do the trick and the trunk was unlocked pretty quick for fear they'd smother for want of air but the bears had gone no one knows where the trunk was empty not as they feared the roosevelt bears had disappeared the bears had gone but no one knew just where to look or what to do detectives hunted high and low and questioned folks who ought to know and listened for the slightest sound and hunted rooms beneath the ground and through the halls walked round and round but not a trace of the bears they found at supper time at home that night the boys and girls told of their flight and the jokes they cracked and tricks they played and the jolliest kind of fun they made and how they saw them locked and tied so tight and fast that children cried some little girls and wee boys too wouldn't go to bed until they knew how teddy b and teddy g got out of the trunk without a key but their papas told them not to mind that some one the bears that night would find and the papers sure the following day would explain in full how they got away end of chapter seven this recording is in the public domain. Chapter 8 of More About Teddy B and Teddy G, The Roosevelt Bears, read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Roosevelt Bears Spend a Day at Atlantic City. How the bears got out of the box that day was never known, the children say, but that afternoon, about half past four, they engaged fine rooms on the seventh floor about halfway up and halfway down of the best hotel there was in town and there they stayed enjoying a rest and eating things the very best and seeing reporters and playing pool and learning things not taught in school said teddy b one morning bright after spending a hot and sleepless night the weather's warm and sticky too for fellows dressed like me and you i move we take a little run down to the shore for some ocean fun i've heard it said that the bathing there with sandy bottoms everywhere is quite a fad with men of wealth who go there simply for their health my health is good said teddy g and i've wealth enough for you and me but if bathing's fun that's what i need my health consists of fun and feed so off they went that very day to try atlantic city spray they took a ferry to camden town and got a train which shot them down across new jersey and to the sea so quick they scarce had time to fee the porter boy who brushed their clothes and told them that hotels in rows lined every street and the ocean front so thick they wouldn't have to hunt and bathing houses a score or more he said they'd find them near the shore they walked the boardwalk to and fro and took a peep at every show they heard bands play and auctioneers make speeches which reduced to tears the crowds of buyers who bargains sought but didn't need the goods they bought they took a turn with a wheeling chair of double size to fit a bear 
with teddy b the lazy kind and teddy g the man behind a palmist read their paws to see how long they'd live and what would be their fortunes in the years to come when as millionaires they'd be going some they saw the fish hall on the pier and the loaded net with fishes queer they rode the donkeys on the sand and held some children by the hand while rides they took on donkey back and made the bathers clear the track they went below with shivery feel in a little boat where the water wheel went splashing round with all its might and pushed their boat into darkest night and then to a boardwalk place they went two coloured bathing suits to rent they dressed themselves like thousands more who were walking up and down the shore and across the sand in running dash they struck the breakers with a splash of all the fun of every sort since columbus sailed from genoa's port that the old atlantic ever had with ocean bathers good or bad with buccaneers or pirate crafts or shipwrecked crews on lonesome rafts with fishermen in ocean wave or boats sent out their lives to save or tourists bound for foreign clime with dinners upset all the time with ocean fish of every form which swim the same in calm or storm with admiral drake or captain kidd who stole some gold and got it hid or with careless boys of whom you've read who sometimes fall in overhead this fun the atlantic had that day some fifty thousand bathers say beat every record for a thousand years and made waves laugh themselves to tears for the roosevelt bears had nerve and pluck and as they faced each wave to duck they plunged right in and got upset head over paws and awful wet they took boys out in water deep and made them from their shoulders leap and rescued swimmers four or five and brought them back to shore alive and when they tired of the ocean's whirls they played on the sand with boys and girls and ran and danced and had lots of fun and dried themselves in the midday sun when back they went to get their suits to put on trousers coats and boots said teddy g from his little house this bathing suit wouldn't fit a mouse it shrunk all up like a lady's glove and won't come off by pull or shove said teddy b from the box next door why didn't you put on three or four but teddy g didn't see the joke and said he'd rip the thing or choke and rip he did from end to end in a way no stitch would ever mend it came off that way both smooth and nice said teddy g when he asked the price they went that night by lucky chance to an ocean pier where a cakewalk dance was on in style with couples six who knew full well the cakewalk tricks two pickaninnies won the prize they beat all records for their size and as they did their last encore the roosevelt bears went on the floor and all four danced with toe and paw the smartest cakewalk you ever saw the dancing finished with laugh and cheer then all the children on the pier shook hands with teddy's b and g and asked them both to come to see a children's dance a pretty sight which they would give the following night but the bears replied with much regret that philadelphia they had not seen yet they must go back and crackers by to celebrate fourth of july for they were bound to show the world that when stars and stripes were first unfurled and liberty rang sweet and loud for warriors brave and patriots proud this flag and bell right then and there meant freedom for both man and bear End of chapter eight this recording is in the public domain chapter nine of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears celebrate the fourth teddy g went out the night before to market street to a fireworks store and bought a load of crackers red and torpedoes round like balls of lead and great big whirlies which you light and then run off with all your might and flags and kites and pistol toys the kind to give to little boys and rockets which go whizzing high to shoot bright stars around the sky and sticks to hold and turn about while balls of fire come popping out 
and drums to beat and horns to blow and things to shoot and things to throw and small balloons in colors gay and a hundred flags to give away in all about twelve dollars worth to celebrate july the fourth they didn't sleep a wink that night but started out before twas light to historic independence square for that said teddy b is where this western world beyond the sea unfurled the flag of liberty and that's the place and this the date where loyalty must celebrate oh you come off said teddy g it's fun that i am here to see who cares to-day who won the game we'll shoot off crackers just the same and this is how the two bears talked as down the street to the square they walked teddy b of heroes brave and bold and things they did in days of old while teddy g just had his say about things to do that very day at the liberty bell they took a try and hoisted it up good and high and rang it out both loud and clear and at every ring there went up a cheer for the only day in all the year when the crack doesn't spoil the tone set forth is independence day july the fourth at least that's what the children say and they know this bell from z to a but the fun began with the roosevelt bears when boys stole on them unawares and put a match to teddy g in his coat-tail pocket where you see he had stored some crackers a good-sized bunch along with hard-boiled eggs for lunch lickety split pat pit bang boo and the coat-tail smoked and split in two and hard-boiled eggs shot here and there and the bear went up and down in air but he told the lads he didn't care that fun might start in anywhere at front or back in hat or boot put punk to powder and let it shoot we are out he said for fun and noise and when fun is trump boys will be boys and from that hour the lads and he shared all there was to do or see they strung a wire from tree to tree and then the fellows with teddy b put crackers all along the wire to prepare the field for an army fire said teddy g as he explained the play we'll fasten a flag on the wire half way and you boys under yonder tree who have taken sides with teddy b when i say the word you put your fire at the cracker next to you on the wire while i if my boys a hand will lend will put a match to the other end to reach the flag first that's the game and the side which wins this piece of fame wins all the crackers big or small which haven't gone off when time i call if on both sides the armies flunk both captains use again their punk when both the sides the rules did know teddy g called out one two three go and at the words two army shot their cracker guns both quick and hot as on they marched along the wire in powder smoke and blazing fire the flag was won by teddy g and prisoners taken ninety-three of the finest crackers the others had all not shot off both good and bad but this army game was children's play compared with things they did that day from noon till night they let things go in sky above and on earth below with slap and bang and smoke and noise like any two july fourth boys they sent balloons up to the clouds and a dozen kites to please the crowds and then shot rockets just to try to hit the things up in the sky they dug a hole down in the ground and filled it full of crackers round and shot them off to hear the sound they burned their paws and scorched their hair and when darkness came they did their share of firing rockets everywhere and in burning lights a fiery red till long past time for going to bed when the day was o'er said teddy b let's go to-morrow to the zoo to see the animals imprisoned there the elephant and polar bear the lions tigers and kangaroos and tell them one and all the news that july the fourth is the day that we who own and love this country do celebrate in smoke and noise that we may teach our girls and boys that this one day of every year is given them free to shout and cheer as a safety valve for them and you to keep things running square and true said teddy g i'll freedom teach and try to practice what i preach 
tomorrow i'll let out the zoo the elephants and monkeys too and the polar bear and kangaroo they're just as good as me or you end of chapter nine this recording is in the public domain chapter ten of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears visit the zoo said teddy g the thing to do as they reached the high fence round the zoo in the early morning about half past two is to get in there with this load of cake before the keepers are awake you climb the fence said teddy b and throw this rope back here to me and pull up the baskets one by one and we'll land in there a good-sized ton of the finest cake that was ever made and strawberry tarts and lemonade and cherry pie and sugar sticks and red ice cream in good-sized bricks and peanut candy and chocolate eclairs and other things quite new to bears don't waste your time in telling me i bought these things said teddy g and up he climbed with business sense a tree which grew beside the fence and out a limb and dropped below and called out all right i'm in let go and up went baskets two by two over the fence into the zoo and before the day began to break the bears had camped with their load of cake on a grassy knoll where they couldn't hide and with dens and pens on every side we're in here now said teddy b what do you say we do said he let's feed the animals said teddy g i move we let out two or three and bring them here and feed them cake and see just how our show will take and if they are pleased why we'll go round and let loose everything on the ground to the elephant house the two bears went and stirred up the biggest elephant and marched him over to their cake before he had time to get half awake you mind these things said teddy g our breakfast hour is half past three if you are good you can have a snack to keep you chewing till we come back and they gave old bolivar that was his name some things to eat till back they came then off they went to the monkey cage where monkeys of every size and age were using hands and feet and lungs and saying good morning in a thousand tongues teddy b made them promise they'd be good at least that's what he understood if he'd open the cage and let them out and give them an hour to run about we have said he some pie and cake which teddy g will undertake to serve out free in an hour or two to every animal in the zoo we'll give you as much as you deserve if you'll act as waiters and help us serve the monkeys grinned from ear to ear and winked at each other a little queer and nodded their heads and seemed to say that the two bears orders they'd obey the cage was opened and the crowd went out little and big with laugh and shout upsetting each other across the green the funniest bunch that was ever seen the bears went then to the beaver pond and told the beavers if they were fond of good ice cream served by baboons to bring on their tails to use for spoons they saw some foxes red and gray and asked them to dine with them that day the wolves looked hungry and said they'd see that all left over was given them free the rhinoceros couldn't accept their treat he had some rheumatics in his feet but in a cage near by a kangaroo jumped twenty feet when they let him through an ostrich standing six feet high called out to the bears as they went by to hurry around with a piece of pie two mountain goats with curling horn said the mountain crest where they were born their father rented just for thanks to the roosevelt bears to play their pranks and this they thought was cause indeed why they should be asked to the morning feed a hedgehog and a porcupine were the next pair asked by the bears to dine then a dromedary chewing his cud said he wouldn't budge from where he stood but if they'd bring him a piece of cake he'd see if he liked their kind of bake from there they went to the animal's cage where they found the tigers in a rage and the lions roaring to beat the band in language the bears didn't understand a chimpanzee came near to see and he made a face at teddy g he was eating pie and said he feared 
that their basket lunch had disappeared the bears took warning and started back to find ten keepers on their track and animals both big and small running wild on every maw and bolivar with his trumpet loud calling for help to stop the crowd the monkeys had gone in a solid bunch and captured the whole of the picnic lunch and out on limbs and high up on poles and on top of roofs and into holes and every monkey with cake or jam or pie or tart or sandwich ham or nuts or lemonade or cheese and bolivar shaking poles and trees and hungry wolves and the kangaroo and mountain goats and a deer or two running wild from place to place helping on the monkey chase twas noon that day when keepers ten and a police brigade of fifty men and a hundred boys and firemen six got the monkey troop to stop their tricks the bears looked on throughout the show and helped on the fun by laughing so for teddy g since he was a cub or at bunker hill down in the hub said that making fun seemed to be his fort and that he had never had such lively sport but the keeper made him change his laugh when he locked them up with a big giraffe and told them to stay and pay a fine when the police court met next day at nine end of chapter ten this recording is in the public domain chapter eleven of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears go fishing when the roosevelt bears had paid their fine for the mischief done and the monkey shine they said good-bye to the big giraffe and told him his neck was too long by half and asked the time it took his food to reach his body from where he chewed and why he held his head so high and the size of collars he had to buy and why he was neither round nor square but the old giraffe didn't seem to care he wagged his tail and winked his eye and nodded his head to say good-bye when they quit the zoo and got outside let us take a train for a little ride i'm tired of town and want to see a farm or stream said teddy b so a train they took without the fare for where it went they didn't care when tickets please the conductor said teddy g began to scratch his head and to think up names of towns he knew like hoboken and kalamazoo but when tickets please he said again teddy g got busy with a ten and said take this for your railway pay and stop the train some time to-day where fishing's good if you go that way the conductor asked them questions strange about their plans as he gave them change and slips of paper with holes punched through he said a fishing stream he knew he'd stop the train at any rate and show them where to buy some bait and fishing poles and hook and line and a jolly inn to sleep and dine they reached the place that day at two and said good-bye to the railroad crew and went by a path up a mountain ridge as the train went on across a bridge they found the place and got fitted out with six poles apiece both long and stout and bait enough and lines and hooks to fish a year in a dozen brooks for said teddy g if fishing's play then i want enough for i mean to stay right by the game for at least a week until every fish that's in the creek is caught and cleaned and cooked and ate or cut up in pieces to use for bait so down their rods and lines they took to the stream below to try their luck of all the fishing that was ever done by isaac walton or his eldest son or by boys who fish with pins for hooks that we read about in the picture books or for salmon trout which weigh a ton that they say are caught in oregon or for shad in the river delaware or for pike or black bass anywhere the fish that day caught by the bears would take first prizes at all the fairs and the way they caught them left and right and the way they coax the fish to bite and the way they toss the fish in air landing in trees and everywhere and the way they made the chipmunks run the fish themselves enjoyed the fun for one fish spoke vows teddy g a great big pounder two or three and said he wouldn't miss the game even if he never lived again a sport he said like teddy g is the kind that fishes love to see teddy g got his line caught in a tree 
and climbed up on high to get it free when a possum called down from above if you come up here you'll get a shove which will toss you off and break your head and put you fifteen weeks in bed but teddy g just shook with glee and said i'll come right up to see the possum scared and trembled so he fell off the limb and down below where teddy b broke an ugly fall by catching him like a rubber ball they fed that possum fishes eight and gave him hook and line and bait and told him stories about the zoo and the things they let the monkeys do they met a man by the stream that day who has fished for a hundred years they say in ocean river creek and pond and mountain brook and lake beyond with statesmen bold and actors gay and farmer lads found by the way he told them stories of fish he'd caught and when fish were few of fish he'd bought and then had talked of this big land and of men he knew on every hand the true to love and those to hate who fish for gain with stolen bait he told them how to have most fun when they struck the town of washington because he said though i'm on the shelf i had some fun there once myself teddy b said he would like to know how near a roosevelt bear could go to the capitol or monument without being shot by the president but the man replied trout fishing's fine but shooting bears isn't in my line take my advice and take your gun when you turn your steps toward washington they shook his hand both long and tight and said they'd leave that very night they could get a train they said at four for washington and baltimore they tramped along a country pike and wished for horses train or bike till they met a lad on his way from school whom they stopped to question about a rule to multiply and square and add and what teachers did with lessons bad and who made spelling and what twas for and the day and hour of the next big war and what athletics were all about and where figures go when you rub them out and why the moon isn't always round and the difference between a noise and sound and on a fence how long twould take to rest an hour or a dinner bake and how things inside the earth were done but the lad couldn't answer a single one said teddy g if it doesn't rain and you'll tell us where to get a train and the fare to pay and how long the run from the place you name to washington and your age and weight and greatest height and two bears you know that never bite i'll give you a dollar quick as a wink and let you have it before you think though he had never learned this dollar trick the lad was bright and he answered quick and they said good-bye and it didn't rain till they stepped on board their pullman train said teddy g as he lit his pipe and bought some apples red and ripe and settled down in an easy seat with a resting place for both his feet i'm tired of clothes i'm tired of fun when i see the town of washington i'm off again for the woolly west i like the mountains much the best i want to live as free as air i'm satisfied to be a bear but you forget said teddy b that all these things we came east to see were made by the brains of every clime to keep folks working all the time that's all right said teddy g they can work ahead but as for me i don't believe that bears were made to be busy always at a trade end of chapter eleven this recording is in the public domain chapter twelve of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears in pittsburgh they were on the train and at their ease when the conductor called out tickets please we have no tickets said teddy g but cash we have as you will see and to washington we want to go to see the president and to let him know that we are fully satisfied that uncle sam is tall and wide and big around of mighty girth the greatest show on all the earth his boys and girls are full of fun from omaha to washington but the conductor said you ought to know if to washington you want to go you've started wrong this train you're on is a pittsburgh special from washington and tomorrow morning if we're not late you'll be in pittsburgh at half-past eight the bears looked dazed and then looked mad 
and then they laughed and both looked glad said teddy b pay up the fares we'll pass to-morrow as millionaires and found a library and put through a deal of high finance in oil or steel but teddy g didn't think so far he thought of night and the sleeping car he recalled some cranky things he said when they made him sleep in an upper bed on a train out west in the banjo song and the things they did a little wrong till both were put right off the train on a kansas farm in a shower of rain the conductor heard this wise remark if on this train when the night is dark you want this bear to behave himself don't make him sleep on a pullman shelf but the trip was made without mishap and both the bears enjoyed a nap in lower berths till eight o'clock when the porter gave their berths a knock and said get up it's broad daylight the iron city is now in sight but things outside look black as night and said teddy b do you mean to say that this is pittsburgh and this is day the man replied get up that's smoke take my advice and when you joke about this town don't do it loud for pittsburgh people live in a cloud and their ideas about a bear may be colored some by pittsburgh air what's that you say called teddy g you seem to know your geography but let me say right here and now i'll teach your pittsburgh people how to dance and sing to laugh and joke in mountain air or city smoke for they must know this very day that pittsburgh too was made for play they took a cab to a big hotel where things are done both smart and swell and breakfast over teddy b on mischief bent went out to see what the telegraph and phone could do to get a crowd their tricks to view he called up schools every one in town and ordered all the children down to the old blockhouse at noon to see the teddy bears teach history then on the mare he played a lark by ordering the police to shenley park to be locked up there till after dark for said teddy b the police you know might spoil our little blockhouse show at costume shops each teddy bear bought a lot of indian things to wear they planned at the old blockhouse to meet at the corner of a nearby street and from that spot like indians race and take possession of the place they did the trick in wild west style their whoops and yells were heard a mile but the fight was short no one to scare there wasn't a soul there anywhere they made the place from roof to floor like seventeen hundred and sixty four and put things into shape to fool the boys and girls from every school the children came five thousand strong a happy merry lively throng the little ones by teachers led to study history they said but the history lesson learned that day was livelier stuff the fellows say than most boys learn at public school for it didn't follow any rule but just shot off with laughter loud in every corner of the crowd the teddy bears as indians brave did everything but behave they chased each other round the block with bow and arrow and tomahawk they climbed to the roof and danced a jig and called to children small and big to catch the arrows every time and bring them back and get a dime and then to finish up the sport they asked the boys to take the fort the boys to be the soldiers bold and they as indians the place to hold in this the boys came out ahead the bears pretended they were dead while the boys to do the thing up well sent two dead bears to the hotel in half an hour they lived again and were out on bicycles for a spin this time to see men making steel and in highland park to have a wheel and to see the zoo and the bridge of size and luna park where they won the prize in the afternoon they put up a lark at the entrance gate of highland park a little lad who flew a kite had got the string caught good and tight on the entrance post where teddy g climbed up the post and said that he would untie the knot and start the kite up to the sky and out of sight a rope was lying twirled around where workmen left it on the ground and teddy g as quick as wink and before the men had time to think caught up the rope and made it tight from post to post from left to right and out he went like a circus clown and whirled around head up and down and walked the rope and made more play than folks had seen for many a day
at six o'clock they said good-bye to busy streets and smoky sky and to boys and girls for the day of fun and started back towards washington said teddy b as the town they passed where furnaces made fiery blast i'd rather be a teddy bear than stand that heat and work in there but this old world was made they say so that men would work and bears could play End of chapter twelve this recording is in the public domain chapter thirteen of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears get out a newspaper when the station clock was striking four the bears got off at baltimore they met a newsboy on the street who said the newsboys were to meet that night at six in a nook of theirs and they'd like to have the teddy bears drop in and help them plan and think how best to earn some extra chink said teddy b i'd like to walk around to your club and hear you talk and make a speech and help along with dance or story trick or song you ought to know the lad replied that some months ago a newsboy died that night his papers didn't sell and he had no home no one to tell how cold he was and hungry too and he just died was frozen through we mean to give a newsboy show to buy a home where the boys can go the story stirred up teddy g you leave that show to me said he i'll use my wit from nose to paw to make more cash than you ever saw i have a plan said teddy b let us run a paper just to see if our sheet won't sell like sixty-three we'll fill each page with jolly stuff and give the boys the greatest puff we'll raise the price and earn the pay to build that home in half a day so off they went to try their hand at a job they didn't understand to edit proofread print and sell a newspaper and do it well the publisher took them all about to show how a paper is gotten out they questioned every man they met and with the manager made a bet that they could put each page in rhyme and get the paper out on time the bet was taken the job was theirs a paper run by teddy bears and they had to have their own sweet way with news and ads for a single day they said they'd do the best they could and make a sheet that was bright and good of all the orders boys ever hear who work on papers all the year the orders given to the boys that night beat every record out of sight they made the editors fume and frown and reporters chase all around the town and telegraph instruments click and chime and telephone bells ring all the time and linotypes go double speed and set up type big enough to read and advertisers fight for space and presses go at double pace and everything hum on every floor to beat all scoops ever made before but the paper was out on time next day the greatest paper newsboys say that was ever printed in all the land by the fastest press or done by hand they had floods and fires and earthquakes too and kings beheaded and discoveries new and ships upset and railroad wrecks and ten millionaires break their necks and the sun eclipsed at twelve at night and japan start up another fight and russia move clean off the earth and an elephant sleep in an upper berth and niagara falls turn upside down and the president wear a golden crown and ten feet of snow right in july and a man discovered nineteen feet high and robberies eight and murders ten and mosquitoes kill ten thousand men and a wall street smash the worst in years that made the bulls and bears shed tears and robinson crusoe come back to life and land in baltimore with a wife and little bo peep who lost her sheep sold at auction mighty cheap and the money hid by captain kidd found in a box without a lid by a colored boy in the isle of wight a hundred thousand dollars bright a diamond mine they said was found on charles street above the ground they had boys at school their lessons know in headlines deep a foot or so and all the girls in the world combined to go to bed at half past nine or if rules they broke to pay a fine and ending up on the final page a prophecy of a future age 
when teddy bears would rulers be and hunt for men in cave or tree with guide and gun with horse and hound in a colorado hunting ground the advertisements made that night were what the printers call a fright all shoved together old and new upside down and wrong side too grocers had hats and caps for sale and tailors eggs and barbers ale and department stores had railroad ads and big hotels sold riding pads and music stores sold soap and tea and theaters said admission free and a jeweler the best in town offered cheap a wedding gown a private school sold cheese and lard and furniture was offered by the yard when teddy b saw what was done he said he thought twould make good fun for we mean said he to sell our sheet and every record sale to beat the paper sold at first for ten but when approved by business men the price went up on every hand and with papers in such brisk demand you couldn't get a single sheet by ten o'clock upon the street the money made for the boys that day bought them a home with grounds to play and enough to spare to give each lad the jolliest time he ever had a fresh air week down by the sea with candy cake and soda free the bears were glad when their work was done to start for the town of washington to see the president and shake his hand and then go home as they had planned end of chapter thirteen this recording is in the public domain chapter fourteen of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the roosevelt bears visit washington d c and complete their tour of the east when the bears arrived in washington they set out at once to buy a gun they bought three guns and pistols ten and suits and belts like fighting men when dress complete then off they went to the house where lives the president when they reached the grounds and the entrance gate no one was near to make them wait the news had spread round everywheres of this visit planned by the roosevelt bears a policeman dodged behind a tree when he got first sight of teddy b detectives wise with eagle eye didn't stop to ask the reason why but ducked their heads behind a wall and got under cover one and all a doorkeeper in gold and black said wait a minute till i come back and lawyers bold and statesmen brave who make the president behave moved out of sight as quick as wink to offer help they didn't think but they were hunters just the same though hunting bears wasn't quite their game the boys who answer the call of bells lost all the breath they use for yells in crossing lawns in serious fright they ran for home with all their might and secretaries three or four got under desks down on the floor when they saw the bears at the entrance door but one little lad who was playing round when he saw the bears he stood his ground and stepped up bravely to teddy g and said who is it you want to see said teddy g in his kindliest way we have travelled east and have come to-day to see the hunter who doesn't scare and who isn't afraid of man or bear the bears by the lad were keenly eyed and he said as he beckoned them both inside my dad's in here but wipe your feet i think you're the kind he likes to meet they stepped inside and the man they saw looked them over from head to paw and with outstretched hand and smiling face he gave them welcome to the place said teddy g when he caught his breath i thought this call meant certain death we armed ourselves with loaded gun when we struck this town of washington for here twas said we'd surely see the man who chased bears up a tree and with both eyes shut on darkest night could hit a bear and win a fight to stand your ground said teddy b is a thing that we bears like to see if fighting's trump or simply fun we stand eyes front and never run but those men of yours who guard your fort should be taken west for a little sport and taught the things you learned out there when climbing mountains chasing bear but he simply laughed at what they said and joked of stories he had read in newspapers of things they'd done on their journey east to washington 
they talked away for an hour or two of hunting trips and friends they knew and this country wide in its cities great from boston hub to the golden gate the bears were asked to come next day at an early hour to have a play on the white house grounds and in children's tent and to breakfast with the president this visit o'er they started out to see the buildings all about the capitol with its rounded dome where the u s senate makes its home and congressmen from every state gather in halls to deliberate the treasury with its vaults of gold as much as a dozen trains could hold and silver too and crisp banknotes enough to load a hundred boats the library with its pictured halls and books stored high within its walls the gardens with their trees and flowers and a museum where they stayed for hours and last of all built straight and high a shaft that stands against the sky set off with stones which good friends sent in memory of a president teddy g said he would like to see that famous little cherry tree and get some cherries red and sweet to take back home to give a treat to the big raccoon and the mountain goat and the old cougar and the young coyote to make them square and help them try to tell the truth and not to lie so off they went that day at three out in the country the farm to see where george's father used to stop and where the boy learned how to chop they found the place as the guide-book said and the cherry stump but no cherries red the stump was there and the hatchet too and neither looking very new said teddy b when these things he saw and took the hatchet in his paw of all the shrines of history which you and i came east to see this spot right here i say is trump this hatchet and this cherry stump teddy g said he would like to try little george's axe on a tree near by to prove to the world that he could do a trick like that and own up too and chop he did an apple tree and left a note where all could see this tree was chopped by teddy g they breakfasted the following day with the president and had their play for an hour before from early dawn with boys and girls upon his lawn they asked the president if he would come out west their home to see said teddy b we'll treat you white and put you up both day and night with grizzly bears and panthers wild and give you sport not quite so mild as driving congress with its load or riding horseback down the road this strenuous life said teddy g is too hard work by half for me i'll start back home this very day and for a month at home i'll stay and rest my eyes and sleep and eat and get down again on all four feet said teddy b our journey's through there's nothing left to see or do we were treated well everywhere we went and we have seen the president and now for home that's what i say but i mean to journey back this way to take a boat for london town to see the king and his golden crown the reporters called that afternoon when they heard the bears were going so soon and begged a column at least of news about their trip and plans and views teddy b wrote out in boldest hand these lines that all can understand to the boys we say be always gay and with jolly play fill every day be brave be true be square and white and don't forget to your friends to write and to the girls we've no advice you're every one both sweet and nice and to all the people whom we've met please say we leave with much regret for our mountain cave and brook and tree signed teddy b and teddy g as their train pulled out an army band played airs well known o'er all the land and boys and girls waved their good-byes and tears filled many children's eyes teddy b called back to the crowd that he would come east again each one to see and teddy g said he'd do his best to treat them well if they came out west end of chapter fourteen this recording is in the public domain chapter fifteen of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears read for librivox dot org by betty b the teddy bears arrive home 
as they crossed the country from east to west they stayed in their sleeping car to rest and but once or twice looked out to see the towns pass through and country said teddy g i'd like again to see that farm where we have been and that country school and those boys at play for that was our very jolliest day what i wish most said teddy b is when we get off this train that we shall have those horses to carry our load back over the hills on the mountain road the horses were there with saddle and rein and met the bears at the railway train and six mountain goats like baggage men were there to help them to the glen as back they travelled that mountain road the goats heaped high with the baggage load and the teddy bears on bronco backs piled front and back with loaded sacks they looked like bandits with their spoil or highwaymen after a day of toil or perhaps more like true knights of old returning home with captured gold as they approached the place where they were born teddy g blew loud on a trumpet horn a west point bugle call he knew and a thousand friends came into view the teddy bears to greet with cheers by this animal camp of mountaineers for the news had scattered far and wide when the bears would reach the mountain side and the crowd had come from far and near to welcome back two friends so dear the old bobcat with the bandaged knee was the first to shake with teddy b and a young cougar and a panther bold helped teddy g his load to hold and two bighorn sheep and a mountain deer stood up on stumps to lead each cheer and hundreds more gave welcome hand to the most famous bears in all the land they had gifts for each bought in the east and they passed them round at the evening feast and then told stories for nights and days about their trip in the city ways and the fun they had and the tricks they played and the things they saw and where they stayed and last and best the time they spent in washington with the president as the bears turned in to their own home nest and curled up snug for the winter's rest said teddy g as he fell asleep if i should pray for things to keep of what i've seen either east or west it's boys and girls i like the best end of chapter fifteen this recording is in the public domain end of more about teddy b and teddy g the roosevelt bears by seymour eaton